So it's time to start working out some of the surface details for the side of the uh, Thompson trigger section. I've started by printing out a couple of different pieces that I can use as reference. One sort of encompasses the entire trigger area and the other is just a little piece of paper that I've cut out that matches the spring section on the side that sort of works like a circlip. Within the real assembly, this would normally be a piece that holds the trigger in place along with the levers on the opposite side. In my instance, this will be a more ornamental piece than was used in the original. So rather than making it up in a piece of aluminium that I'd probably have to work out some way of gluing on, I've decided to make it up in the sort of same sort of traditional material that they would use, uh, which would have been a spring steel. Uh, I'm using an old hand saw because it has the same sort of thickness and spring properties that we're going for. The biggest thing with getting it cut to shape is I need to de-harden it to begin with so that it's soft enough that I can manipulate it and move it around and cut it and grind it so that it matches the uh, pattern piece of paper that I've got. This video is pretty much dedicated to just this one piece because of the complexity involved in getting it done. And I should be able to show you how it integrates into the assembly of it a lot better once I've got this piece finished. Now that I've finished up all the shaping on it, I need to re-harden the piece. And to do that, I'm bringing it back up to red hot. And that's also at the temperature where the metal loses its magnetic nature, so it won't stick to a magnet anymore. That lets me know that it's at the correct temperature for quenching. And I'm using an ordinary canola oil for the hardening of the metal. I'm just using a file to make sure that it skates across the surface so that it's appropriately hardened. I'm just tempering it through a cooler flame so that the metal just starts to change colour through a straw sort of colour and then I'll just set it aside to let it cool naturally and then from there it's pretty much ready for use. Now that I've got that done I've got some aluminium rod that matches the dimensions roughly of the pins that go through and once I've sanded that diameter down to fit through those holes I can pin that over and what you end up with is that sort of idea and that permanently rivets those pins into place so that I can work out where the holes need to go so that they can go through. I've already milled out the section you can see there where the trigger goes through and you can start to see how that will hold the pivot point for the trigger. So that's quite a bit of work for a little complicated little piece like that, but it'll certainly add to the details of it and I think it looks the part quite nicely. So anyway guys, that'll be the update for this time. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.